Welcome viewers. In this video, we are going to do design of a transmission line tower foundation calculation for type 1, which is a pad and chimney using Indian standard. This is part 2 of 5. In this, we are going to do check for bearing capacity. Earlier video that is in part 1, we had a discuss about a tower geometry, design foundation loads, soil parameters, foundation geometry, which we had to tentatively fix some foundation dimensions to check for all the parameters related to the foundation pad and chimney. And finally, we did uplift resistance check in part 1. This is part 2 of 5. In the part 3 upcoming video, we are going to look on how to do sliding and overturning check for this type of foundation and followed by that part 4 will cover the design of chimney part 5 will be the final one with the design of base lab so let, let me look into that part 2 so before going to watch this part 2 we request you to watch our previous videos in part 1 also there is another video for input record for the transmission line tower foundation one more video is explaining about the design of step angle with the foundation in AAC code American code so all the video links related video links are given in the description you can look those before going to watch this video let me go into that excel calculation this is the excel sheet on the screen you can see this we had discussed about our previous video so some topics which we had covered is tower geometry so how to arrive this tower geometry we had discussed in our previous video and how to extract the design of foundation loads design found loads from the structure we had explained like down thrust uplift side thrust all those information we need to get from the structure part normal condition and broken weight condition cases also we discussed about the subsoil parameters this is based upon the soil report and the concrete density, concrete specification, the reinforcement, all those grade we had assumed tentatively. Foundation geometry we discussed in the last video. So this is a tentative dimensions we can consider. After that, we need to check all the parameters, uplift, resistance, bearing pressure, sliding, overturning, all those things. And then finally, we can do design of chimney and base slab so that this entire sizes which we had assumed we can able to justify about the stability in other parameters and finally with this uh, uplift check we had completed our uh, previous video that is part one video now we are going to start with the bearing capacity check so this is the uh, uh, bearing pressure calculation we need to do it so first thing we need to understand the bearing pressure equation bearing pressure equation is nothing but a simple combination of bending stress and the axial stresses so in uh, member design we used to go by designing the member based upon the uh, stress value so if that uh, actual stress combined with the bending stress is less than the limited stress then we can call it as the member is safe so similar kind of pattern we are going to adapt for bearing capacity check so this is the equation you can see in the combined axial and bending stress equation so this same equation we are going to apply for bearing pressure calculation for foundation so here p by a plus sigma m i divided by z we are going to where a equal to is a area uh, which is to be length into breadth of the base lab and z is a section modulus and section properties which is l into b cube by 6 where m and p are moment and vertical down thrust so when coming to the breakup for this uh, bearing pressure equation we can call it as detail bearing pressure equation here P divided by A plus M1 divided by Z, M2 divided by Z and M3 divided by Z is a whole equation which we are going to follow for calculation of bearing pressure. So in this M1 is a moment due to eccentric of down thrust. M2 is a moment due to trans transverse side thrust. M3 is a longitudinal side thrust moment. 
so let we go in detail about moment due to side thrust at toe foundation foundation toe so in that we need to consider four cases one is a normal condition transverse side thrust in that normal condition itself we need to calculate for longitudinal side thrust also followed by the same other two are for broken wire condition for transverse side and longitudinal side so side thrust we know that due to soil pressure that is the passive earth pressure we need to consider of w h square into the wall size or the exposed area we can call it as column size into passive earth pressure coefficient which is 1 plus sin phi divided by 1 minus sin phi or data so this is a equation generally we used to follow to find out the side thrust which is which is uh, mobilized due to the subsoil around the chimney so the cl is nothing but it is a chimney size which we had considered as a 700 mm angle of earth first term also we got considered in our uh, foundation geometry is 20 degree and this 1800 kg per cubic meter is a soil density which we had considered already so we we are going to calculate for both dry and wet soil so it is better to have a higher density of soil for calculating this moment due to side thrust at foundation toe so these are the primary input which is required to find the side thrust which is developed by the soil subsoil surrounding the column so by applying this equation we are having only unknown is h value h and f value is the unknown value so we need to find out this h value by applying or equating this f equal to side thrust which is coming from the structure output so here we already having in the design foundation loads the side thrust value as 9166 so that we need to equate with this equation which is h equal to square root of f divided by this entire other known value which is 1284.96 so by applying this we can able to find out the h value as 2.7 meter here in this picture you can see that 2.4 meter is a effective soil filled area but the h value the height of uh, soil due to the side thrust is coming more than the 2.5 meter 2.4 meter then in that case we need to consider only the 2.4 meter because it is exceeding the 2.4 meter means there is no soil to be considered only the 2.4 meter to be considered because of it is exceeding that h after that we need to find out the resisting soil force which is from this equation so here we know that uh, h equal to square root of f divided by h2 this one off into 1800 into 1 plus sin 20 divided by 1 minus sin 20 into 70 so this value is uh, 128496 so applying this 128496 into h square which we had derived from this side thrust of the column so we are getting finally the resisting soil forces 7401.4 so this is a reverse equation of this h value so finding this 7401.4 kg is a resultant soil force and finally we need to find out the movement due to side thrust at the base of the footing so this is nothing but 1966 is a side thrust which is coming from the structure loads that into depth we need to calculate the total depth which is up to this level so 2.4 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.25 plus 0 0.1 we should not include this lean concrete uh, thickness and this 0 0.3 also which is above the ground level because the load is going to act the side thrust is going to act only at the tip of the chimney top tip of the chimney so these are the 
depth we need to consider for side thrust to calculate the moment 2.4 plus 0.2 0.25 plus 0.1 plus 0.3 so this all the depth in the vertical direction exclude this lean concrete thickness we are considering and this value we need to detect from the resisting force from the soil just we had calculated this 7401.4 kg that we need to multiply it with 0 0.2 plus 0 0.25 and 0 0.1 so this all the value and we need to consider one third of the soil filled area because these are the area where there is no soil or less soil you can say but effective soil will be coming at this 2.4 meter so this area we need to consider 1.3 because it is like a trapezoidal or uh, or triangular frustum so only the one third of the part we need to consider for this 2.4 meter so by uh, deducting this uh, resultant or uh, resisting soil force to the side thrust of the structure by multiplying the centroidal or effective lever arm distance we can able to calculate the moment due to side thrust similar wise we need to calculate for longitudinal side thrust also so here also same approach finding the side thrust uh, equation using the passive earth pressure calculation half into w h square into cl plus uh, one plus uh, sin phi divided by one minus sin phi same the weight of uh, uh, density of the soil angle of the earth first from and column size we are considering similar like we are here we are going to equate the longitudinal side thrust instead of uh, earlier transverse side thrust so here in this case we are finding the h value which is also above the 2.4 meter that is a soil to fill area then we need to consider only the 2.4 meter the resisting soil force f equal to same way the reverse equation we are applying here after finding the h value and the finally the resisting soil force is 7401.4 and applying this into the effective moment we can able to find out by making the summation that is a grass summation or a net moment we can able to find out here like 8593 is nothing but it is a longitudinal side thrust and deducting with the resisting soil force and its lever arm distance we are getting the moment 17935 so similar kind of calculation we are doing for broken wire condition transverse side thrust also so same procedure we are following but here after applying this uh, f1 which is a side thrust of a broken wire condition transverse uh, side thrust so which is uh, listed here we are getting h value as 1.5 meter which is less than the soil area uh, 2.4 so we need to consider only the 1.5 actual h value we need to consider if it is less than 2.4 that is filled soil area so similar like uh, resisting soil we need to consider from the equation above it is a reverse equation h equal to square root of uh, f divided by this equation half into 1800 h square so this equation again we need to uh, reverse calculation to find the resisting soil force and moment due to side thrust finally is a same way broken wire condition transverse thrust which is here into the soil uh, resisting uh, force into lever arm distance now finally we are getting the moment for this case also same approach we are going to apply for longitudinal side thrust and finally we are getting the longitudinal side thrust force also next the final 
calculation for this uh, part 2 video is moment bearing pressure calculation so next one we need to calculate the bearing pressure so for that as we said already it is like a stress uh, calculation it is a combination of uh, axial stress and bending stress so here that uh, down thrust we are considering down thrust from the structure 5643 divided by this uh, true length factor so that the inclination of the force can be converted to the verticality of the force plus this uh, 6629 is nothing but it is a concrete weight which is acting downward we have already calculated this uh, here under uplift uh, resistance check so divided by area so this p by a equation we are applying here so this is a axial stress and now we are going to apply the bending stress so here this uh, down thrust usually will have some inclination so for that this down thrust will act in a two way direction for angle member so 5653 divided by 1.03 we are considering where we are taking this down thrust inclined down thrust we are converting to the true vertical so for that we are dividing 1013 but it is a two dimensional so we are multiplying this with the factor called tower leg slope so this force will cause in two directions so we are multiplying into two this force will cause at a depth equivalent to total depth of base slab drop thickness and the slope level so this three depth only this equivalent depth will act so we are summation we are summating this all the three thickness so this will give you one type of movement so that divided by the z value is we already seen that l b cube divided by 6 so that we are applying and we have already calculated the side thrust movement also here so that movement divided by 1 by 6 bd cube that is the z value we are applying here so similar like for longitudinal thrust for normal condition also we get calculated here so that divided by z value so finally we are summating all the equation we are getting 424829 kg per square meter which is less than our bearing pressure 25000 kg per meter cube then we can call it as this foundation is safe in bearing pressure for normal condition similar like we can also check for broken wear condition the same way only the values will vary so for this broken wear condition as the load is very less and uh, the soil re resisting factor also very uh, less or high or equal uh, uh, equilibrium in uh, nature the bearing pressure get even reduced compared to the normal conditions so it is less than the bearing pressure friends this case also safe so with this the bearing pressure calculation is get completed next we will look in another video